Hello everyone, welcome to Pharma Elite. Today we are here with another video on the topic of colloids from Boost Your Basic series. I hope you all are enjoying the series and watching the videos. If you have missed our series, you can go to our channel Dharmesh Mehta Chipat. On this YouTube channel, you will find all our previous videos. So let's begin with today's topic of colloids. Now what are colloids? Colloids are defined as those polymeric systems where at least one dimension of the dispersed phase measures between 10 to 100 Armstrongs to a few micrometers. मतलब ये colloids का definition क्या है? ये colloids ऐसे polymeric systems हैं जिसका at least one dimension of the dispersed phase is between this 10 to 100 Armstrong size to a few micrometers. That is the colloidal range. And now there are different ways to classify this colloidal system. First way to classify the colloidal system is according to their states of matter. That is whether it is a solid, whether it is a liquid or a gas and how you call it, classify them according to this. This is with examples. So first you have something called as dispersed phase and then this is the dispersion medium or the vehicle. So dispersed phase, so this is your dispersed phase. And then you have the dispersion medium or the vehicle, which is outside this. That is, you add this dispersed phase into the dispersion medium. Dispersed phase ko dispersion medium ke andar disperse karte hai. That is, this is the vehicle or the solvent part of it, you can say. It is not always a liquid. Just to describe it, that is, one thing is being added to other. So now, when your dispersed phase is solid, that is this first part of it, it is solid and your dispersion medium is also solid. That is if you are putting solid in a solid, what will be the examples? Zinc oxide paste and toothpaste. The examples are important here. You can ask any direct question in the Say example of a liquid and solid system, example of a gas and liquid system or whether above examples are correct or not. You can ask now, when it comes to the next one, that is your dispersed phase is solid and the dispersion medium is liquid. That is, when you are adding a solid to a liquid, what you get is bentonite and magma salts. Then when the dispersion medium is gas, again, the dispersed phase is solid and the dispersion medium is gas. What you get is a solid aerosol of isoproteinol sulfate inhalation aerosol. The next category, that is when the dispersed phase is liquid and the dispersion medium is a solid. That is when you are adding a liquid inside a solid, what are the examples? A typical example is butter. Another example is oil in hydrophilic ointment. Next is when liquid is dispersed in liquid, that is a liquid liquid colloidal system. Example is soya bean oil in water emulsion. Now when the dispersed phase is liquid and the dispersion medium is gas that is when you are adding liquid to a gas you get a liquid aerosol typical example is beta methazone topical aerosol Ab next take hai when the dispersed phase is gas now when this is gas and your dispersion medium is solid what you get is solid foams and pumice very very important examples Agar apka dispersion dispersed phase gas hai or dispersion medium liquid hai then there are Forms which are used in carbonated beverages. And when the dispersed phase is gas and dispersion medium is also gas, such a colloidal system is not possible. That's why you do not get any examples under this category. Next way to classify that. First, we saw based upon the state of matters. Ab next way kaise classify kar sakte is based upon the type of interaction of the dispersed particles with the molecules of dispersion medium. You can classify them in three types, lyophobic, lyophilic and association. Ye teen ways se hum colloids ko classify kar sakte hai based upon the interaction of the dispersed phase with the dispersion medium. Now first we will look at lyophilic. Lyophilic matlab kya? Philic meaning solvent loving. That is these are the ones which have loving affinity towards the solvent. This term indicates that the dispersed particles will have a greater affinity to the dispersion medium that is the solvent. Agar ye aapka solvent hai aur ye jo aapke dispersed particles hai, these particles are having good affinity that is they love solvent loving then you call it as lipophilic so lyophilic. And the term indicates that their dispersed particles will have a greater affinity to the dispersion medium. And when the dispersion medium in this case will be forming a sheet 
around the colloidal particles and solvates. Since they have affinity, the dispersion medium, say these are your particles, this dispersion medium will be forming a sheet around this particle. And therefore, it makes this lyophilic colloids thermodynamically stable. Very, very important with systems are thermodynamically stable is lyophilic, that is solvent loving systems. For this reason, the preparation of lyophilic colloids is easy because they are stable. And when the dispersion media, when the dispersion is reversible, now why it is reversible? Because this colloidal particles can be reconstituted after the purification step. This dispersed particles may be hydrophilic or may be lyophilic. Now, what is hydrophilic and lyophilic? Hydrophilic are the ones such as acacia, gelatin, albumin, and insulin. That is, they have affinity for the, that is, their dispersed phase is water. Then these are hydrophilic particles. And when their dispersed phase is organic liquids, then these are called as lyophilics for such as rubber and polystyrene. That is based upon the nature of dispersion medium, whether it is water or an organic liquid, you call it as hydrophilic or lyophilic or lipophilic. Then the dispersion of rubber and polystyrene in organic solvents like benzene or ethyl methyl ketone is lyophilic. That is, you're putting it in organic solvent. And dispersions which are referred to as hydrophilic colloids when we use water as a dispersion medium. Examples for hydrophilic are acacia, gelatin, and starch. That you have always seen with starch and water dispersion, which we prepare in lab also. So the, all these where you use water as a dispersion medium and the particles have affinity for it. These are hydrophilic colloids. And when we use organic solvent as the medium or the dispersed dispersion medium of the vehicle and the particles of the dispersed phase will have an affinity for this phase. It is called as lyophilic colloid. It is also possible that these lyophilic colloids which you obtain are with or without a charge. That is, they will be sol having solvent affinity, but whether they are with charge or without charge. So example, another one important is acacia in water. This type of a system has a negative charge. And gelatin system in water has a positive charge. So these are examples. And as a positive charge, when it is at pH less than 4.7, gelatin system has a positive charge. But when you bring this at isoelectric pH, the charge becomes neutral. That is at exact at pH 4.7, the charge will be neutral. When it is below 4.7, it has a positive charge. Then the next one is lyophobic colloid. These are the dispersions in which very little attraction is possible between the dispersed phase and dispersed medium. Now, when you see a dispersion, sorry, here the test typo error, it will be dispersion medium. Now, we have seen in previously lyophilic, there is affinity between the particles for the medium. Here, there is very little affinity and there could be less affinity. That is why that is they are not much stable and also they do not have presence of any uh, sheet around them. What you have seen in the previous case, because uh, these particles do not have any protective sheet. I'll tell you, this sheet which surrounds the particle, like this is the dispersed phase and this dispersed phase and this is the dispersion medium. These particles do not have any protective sheet surrounding the particles and the particles are away from each other and they are stable because they're having some charge, but they are away from each other and they remain uniformly dispersed because of the repulsive forces. And in this case, the systems will be thermodynamically unstable because there is no protective sheet, they move away from each other. And these dispersions are therefore thermodynamically unstable, whereas lyophilic were thermodynamically stable. Now, when we use water as a medium, this is called as hydrophobic dispersions. Now, what is phobic? Meaning you don't like something. It is phobia. That is phobic. Because these are not having much attraction towards that is little attraction, meaning phobic. And when the dispersed and phase comes of inorganic particles, water is generally the medium. Examples would be gold, silver, sulfur, arsenious sulfide, silver iodide in water. Next category is association colloids. Now, what are these? In this case, the amphiphiles, they have amphiphiles which are present in associated colloids. These are the molecules or ions which have certain affinity for both polar and non-polar solvents. That is an amphiphilic molecule will be attracted to both polar as well as non-polar. 
Now, when you have low uh, concentrations of surface active agents in water, when you have less of the surface active agent, these amphiphiles are usually, uh, they, sorry, not amphiphiles, the polymers are usually as monomers, which are in subcolloidal range. And say, as you increase, as you add more and more of the surfactant, these monomers will form aggregates among themselves. And these aggregates or amphiphilic molecules will be forming micelles. And each micelle is around 50 monomers and is about 50 Armstrongs. I'll show you with the help of a diagram. So this is the structure of a micelle. This is the head and the tail. The head is the one which is hydrophilic and the tail is the one which is hydrophobic. Now, when you talk about micelles, I would like to show this picture. See, at low concentrations, that is when your surface active agent concentration is low and you're taking this amphiphiles in water, they are... Uh, having individual monomers, right? And as you go on, increase in the concentration, these amphiphile molecules will get arranged closely or packedly, and they form aggregates which are called as micelles. This amphiphilic concentration, and when you reach a particular concentration, which is called as a critical micelle concentration, you see here. Now we we'll look at the definition. Critical micelle concentration is defined as the concentration range of surfactant at which you see the micelle start forming. That is, as you see here, as you have increasing the concentration of surface active agents, the molecules get aggregated or they form structure. And these structure is called as a micelles. And that particular concentration, when the surface is fully saturated, it is called as critical micelle concentration, where you get the micelles start appearing. And this is in the bulk of the solution. You can see when you use a polar solvent, the micelles or amphiphilic molecules orient themselves in a spherical shape. At the CMC, they're in a spherical shape. This is the hydrophobic tail and this is the hydrophilic head. So this is the hydrophobic pocket because all tails are oriented. And in case of non-polar solvents, it will be the opposite. The tail will be outward and the head will be inward. So this will be forming the hydrophilic pocket. I hope you have understood it. Now, how do you prepare the colloids? Now, for entrance, you only know the names of these methods. You don't need to know all of the details about the details because you have already studied in the semester. There will not be more deep questions in the exam. Not more deep questions, just the names are sufficient if you know the basic idea from your semesters. Now, how do you prepare colloids? It is by mechanical dispersion methods, electrical dispersion or Bredigag's method, Peptization and ultrasonic treatment. ये चारों मेथड से कोलाइड्स बनते हैं। अब हमने चलो कोलाइड्स बनाए लिए। तो how are you going to purify that? Of course there will be some impurities, right? So there are three methods typically to purify कोलाइड्स। One is dialysis, next is electrodialysis and third is ultrafiltration. Just remembering the names is more than enough. And if at all any question is asked, I suppose you should be able to answer. Now, when you prepare colloids to purify them, yet there will be some instabilities. There will be some shortcomings of it. So, these instabilities kaise hote hai? And how are you going? What type of instabilities can occur? Now, when you say lyophobic, that is the ones which have less affinity towards the solvent. The removal of electrolyte can cause instability. Or addition of even excess of electrolyte can cause an instability. Or when you add electrolyte of opposite charge, it will cause instability. And when you have an addition of oppositely charged colloids, these could be the different reasons why your colloid has been unstable. And now what are the instabilities in lyophilic colloids? That is, they have high solvent affinities. But still they are having some instabilities when you add excess of electrolyte or when you add oppositely charged colloids or addition of a non-solvent. In all these cases, you're getting incompatibilities. Now, what is this? This is another important thing from colloid topic is the schusel hardy rule. That is hardy Schusel rule or schusel hardy rule, however you pronounce it. It states that the precipitating power of an ion of a dispersed phase of opposite charge will increase with increase in valency or charge of the ion. Matlab simple words mein ye hai ki aapka jo ion hai, say you having sodium ion, wo ion ka precipitating power in a dispersed phase. Jab ye ion ko aap kisi dispersed phase mein dalte ho, which is having opposite charge, ye ion ka precipitating power badega jab uska valency badega or when you charge of the ion is going to increase. 
विद एग्जाम्पल आपको पता चलेगा दिस इज दी आयन सोडियम बेरियम एंड एल्यूमिनियम एज यू सी दैलेंसी इज इंक्रीजिंग द प्रेसिपिटेटिंग पावर इज इंक्रीजिंग सेम इज फॉर एन आयंस इज थ्री इट इज माइनस टू एंड इट इज वन सो एज दैलेंसी इंक्रीजेस द प्रेसिपिटेटिंग पावर विल इंक्रीज another term with terminology you can see with respect to colloids is gold number ab ye gold number kya hai gold number is the minimum weight of a protective colloid which is required to prevent the coagulation of 10 ml of standard gold solution when 1 ml of 10% nacl solution is added to it मतलब ये क्या है कि सपोज दिस इज योर कोलॉइडल सॉल्यूशन एंड ये एक प्रोटेक्टिव कोलॉइड है सो द मिनिमम वेट इसका मिनिमम वेट जो आपको ये सॉल्यूशन के कोगुलेशन को प्रिवेंट करने को चाहिए दैट इज हाउ मच मिनिमम ऑफ दिस प्रिवेंट प्रोटेक्टिव कोलॉइड इज रिक्वायर्ड टू प्रिवेंट द कोगुलेशन ऑफ दिस solution now what you are taking as a reference is 10 ml of your gold salt because it is a standard solution when you are taking 10 ml of gold salt and to prevent its coagulation aapko kitna protective colloid lagega that is des described by gold number but when under the condition jab maine 1 ml of 10% nacl dala hai ye gold salt ko liya hai in this i am adding 1 ml 10 ml of gold salt standard I am adding one ml of ten percent sodium chloride to it, and up this precipitation, co this coagulation, co prevent करने को मुझे protective colloid कितना चाहिए? That is the minimum weight which I need is called as gold number. The higher the gold number, lower will be the protective power. Because क्या है minimum weight I read right. So when you get higher gold number means आपको ज़्यादा colloid protective colloid रख रहा है. मतलब इसका protective power कम है. because a greater amount of colloid is required to prevent coagulation same thing it is coagulation ko prevent karne ke liye aapko kitna colloid chahiye that is what is describes gold number and when you use more of this you get more of gold number and this gold number increases matlab aapka ye protective colloid ki efficiency ya its power bahut kam hai power kam hai isliye aapko zyada quantity lagega actually you require something which is in minimum as from the definition before we move further do subscribe to our youtube channel and make sure you press the bell icon so that you get a reminder when we post a video we also have our free whatsapp groups where we are posting daily mcqs for gpat niper and other exams pharma related job openings if you wish to get added to our group please messages on the below mentioned numbers and we will add you to our groups now let us solve some mcqs from the topic of colloid some typical questions what can be expected it is very easy just you need to know the definitions classifications and examples now dispersion of acacia in water gives the colloid of type dash association negative colloid neutral colloid and positive colloid abhi hi humne dekha tha pichle side mein that acacia in water ye kaun se type ka colloid hame deta hai let us see whether a positive and negative colloids अंडर पॉजिटिव में एग्जांपल्स कौन से हैं हेमोग्लोबिन मेथिलिन ब्लू सॉल्ट टिटेनियम ऑक्साइड सॉल्ट एंड अंडर नेगेटिव द एग्जांपल्स वुड बी स्टार्च गम क्ले जिलेटिन एंड चारकोल हमें क्या पूछा है इज अकेशिया दैट इज इट इज इन दिस कैटेगरी ऑफ गम जिलेटिन स्टार्च सो नेगेटिव सॉल्ट्स आर व्हिच इज बीइंग फॉर्मड बाय कोलॉइड्स देयरफॉर द आंसर इज नेगेटिव देखा कितना इजी क्वेश्चन है नेक्स्ट इज Electrodialysis is a method which is employed for col in colloidal chemistry for the purpose of dash identification, preparation, purification, stabilization. अब एक तो बात हो सकता है भाई common sense की identification करने के लिए इतना high level method तो नहीं चाहिए. You can identify colloids by some other means like visual inspection, microscopically and other things. Now preparation. Preparation के बारे में तो हमने देखा था कि ये prepare done by mechanical dispersion, electrical dispersion, baptization, ultra filtration. And here there is no option of electrodialysis. Now stabilization, stability के बारे में देखा था what are the instabilities and how they occur. So now only thing which is left is purification. And yes, we have seen that electrodialysis, dialysis and these methods are used for purification of colloids so the correct answer is option c dekha aapko pura electrodialysis pata bhi nahi hoga just its application is enough 
now which is thermodynamically unstable lyophilic hydrophilic association and lyophobic abhi hi humne dekha tha ki there has a system wherein the particles of this dispersed phase do not have much affinity for the dispersion medium isme koi protective sheet nahi hota hai they have less affinity as a result the particles are scattered they are far away because of the repulsive forces and such a system is thermodynamically unstable और ये सबको डिस्क्राइब करने वाला एक ही सिस्टम है दैट इज लाइफोबिक इन लाइफोफिलिक यू हैड सीन पार्टिकल्स को बहुत एफिनिटी होता है टुवर्ड्स द मीडियम और द सॉल्वेंट दे गेट अट्रैक्टेड अराउंड द शीट एंड दे बिकम स्टेबल इन लाइफोबिक देयर इज नो सच इन एसोसिएशन दैट इज एम्फोफाइल्स यू गेट माइसेल्स एंड इन हाइड्रोफिलिक इट इज अ सब टाइप ऑफ लाइफोफिलिक यू कैन से वेयर इन द सॉल्वेंट इज वाटर एंड इट्स हैविंग एफिनिटी सो द वंस व्हिच आर थर्मोडायनामिकली अनस्टेबल इज लाइफोबिक next question the protective ability of colloid is measured as dash zeta potential gold numbers streaming potential and none of the above ab none to option nahi ho sakta hai idhar aur one thing we can say is zeta potential ke bare mein colloids ya streaming potential colloids ke bare mein humne kuch suna nahi hai yes we have seen it in suspensions emulsions and other topics but specifically colloids ke bare mein ek hi term jo humne suna hai in this chapter is gold number so the what is but gold number it is the number of milligrams of the protective colloid which is just sufficient to prevent coagulation of 10 ml of standard gold solution when you add 1 ml of 10% nacl to it ye humne abhi dekha tha pichle side mein still i'll repeat it when you are having a standard gold salt solution and when to this solution you are adding 10% 1 ml of this 10% nacl solution aapko kitna protective colloid chahiye to prevent the coagulation process this is what it describes your gold number so regarding the protective ability of your colloid is something which tells about gold number thank you everyone for watching the videos stay tuned more videos are coming soon